Well, good morning, everyone. You're very welcome. Great to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining with us for our service today. Uh, if you're visiting with us this morning, a uh, very special welcome. We hope you feel very much at home with us as we gather together to praise and to worship the Lord. On your behalf, I want to welcome our speaker today, the Reverend Kenny Hanna. Uh, Kenny is PCI's rural chaplain. He's working in the South Down and Armagh area, and he's doing a great work. This is a fairly new work, and we're going to hear a wee bit about that, and Kenny's then going to open up God's Word to us. Uh, he's one of my creeps buddies uh, when I go over to Scotland every January to a conference. He wasn't able to join us this year. We missed you, but I know you're working hard to get ready for today. Uh, so uh, that's even better. Great to have you, Kenny. Um, just a few announcements then. Uh, we meet again tonight at half past six. Mark will continue our studies in Esther. We're looking at chapter three tonight if you want to do a bit of advanced reading. And Katie and Naomi and Tim will be leading some worship. Uh, there'll be a cuppa afterwards this evening, so don't be rushing away. Uh, and do remember our prayer time beforehand at six o'clock in the minister's room. And then YF is starting back this evening. Uh, they'll be joining us for the first few moments of the service here and then head down for their main program in the hall. So we look forward to seeing our young people back and would love to welcome any new ones who come along for the first time. Looking into the week ahead then, our Friendship Bar meets on Tuesday afternoon at half two in the Minor Hall. They're having a video presentation on the Biblical Jordan. So all our seniors are very welcome to that. Campaigners on Tuesday evening, both sections at 6.45. Then this week, Establish on Wednesday evening will be another gathering of our small group Bible studies down in the Lynn building. So we're meeting from 8 o'clock and questions that will be relating to this evening's sermon uh, can be collected from the back tables today. Obviously, it'd be good if you were able to be here tonight to hear the sermon. Then our bowlers on Thursday evening at 8 o'clock in the Campbell Hall for their mixed singles competition. And then NYPD on Friday evening, as usual, at 7. Next Sunday, then, our services at the usual times will continue with our Love Your Church series uh, and then our studies in Esther next Sunday evening. Just a reminder that in the light of increased COVID and flu outbreaks and current hospital log jams, uh, we're desisting from handshaking at the door uh, until this current wave of infections has passed, just hopefully for a few weeks. Then in response to last Sunday's sermon on Love Your Church Through Serving, you'll see in the seats these little response forms which show some areas of congregational life where we could use some additional help. So if you can help in any way by filling in the forms, just indicating how uh, you can best serve, leave them on the offering plate, that would be really very much appreciated. And this could be very useful for any of our new families who have been coming along recently and would like to integrate a wee bit more into the life and work of our church. Nearly done. Uh, we're hoping to restart Little Lights, our toddlers group, on Friday the 24th of February. Now we're going to tell you more about that as it gets closer, but if you were available to help either with kitchen duties or with general mingling and welcoming duties at Little Lights, which is now going to be on a Friday morning, on a rota basis, that would be another way in which you could serve in addition to the ones specified here on these little sheets. So there's actually a space at the bottom of these uh, just of options of how you could maybe help. So just write in there that you'd like to help at Little Lights. Finally, we just want to extend our sympathy to Neville Doak and his family on the passing of his brother-in-law, Pastor Ewell Chain, uh, during this past week. I think Ewell was known to many of you, and we remember the family very much in our prayers. I think that's all I need to say by way of announcement for now. So as we uh, welcome Kenny here today and we're thinking about his work as a rural chaplain, I'm drawn to some familiar words from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God 
reigns. We're going to sing together our opening praise now, great words of truth that herald the salvation of our God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And believe it or not, today marks the 250th anniversary of the first time this was ever sung in a church, in John Newton's own church. So let's mark that and let's sing these great words together in our praise of God. take a moment or two and we'll pray together. Let's all pray. Father, thank you for another opportunity this morning to come right into your presence. We've just been singing there of your amazing grace. And Lord, you are a truly mind-blowingly awesome God of grace. We come before you today painfully aware of our own grubby sinfulness and of the times, even in recent days, when we have let you down and dishonored your name. And Lord, it's because of that that we thank you so much for Jesus, your Son, whom you sent into this world to save us from our sins, to forgive us, to cleanse us, and to make us all right instead of all wrong. You came to give us hope, and Lord, we need hope of a brighter future when we look around us and see much, so much despair going on here and now. Lord, all of this is because of your grace, your all-sufficient grace, your grace that is greater than all our sin, your grace which is enough, your grace which is amazing, that it would save a wretch like me. So, Lord, we do confess our sins before you today, humbly, and honestly. And Father, as we welcome Kenny amongst us this morning, thank you for him and for the work you've called him to do and for the open doors of opportunity you've given to him over the past year to bring the good news of your salvation to our local rural communities where there's so much anxiety about the state of the rural economy, 
but so much spiritual need. Bless him here today. May he feel very much at home amongst us. Give him a real liberty as he shares about his work and as he opens up your word to us. Just encourage his heart as you through him speak into all of ours. And Lord, do your work and build your church amongst us today. And may we all worship you well and be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the thanks and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to read together now from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. You'll find that on page 974 in the Pew Bibles. The words are also on the screen if you want to follow them there. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Just a few verses. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest feet. Amen. We'll come back to that later and we'll hear some more. Just at this point, boys and girls, if you want to head out down to Kid Zone, I hope you have a great morning down there, and uh, you'll have your own little program. So. Uh, Pamela now to come up and she's going to just say a wee word to about uh, Connect. Didn't know where she'd gone, but there she is. Good morning, everybody. Well, we're really looking forward to our next ladies' meeting. It's not this Wednesday night, but next Wednesday night, the 25th of January. And the theme is... Deeper together in body and soul. Now, these are the three people that we're going to meet at uh, the meeting, all our own people again, which is great. So we have Emma, who is our church administrator. Now, I know a lot of you may know of Emma, but don't actually know her. So Emma's going to tell us a little bit about herself, and she's going to encourage us to keep our bodies healthy. And then leading from on from Emma, we have Andrew, Andrew Beatty. Now, Andrew, I'm sure some of you know, but not all of you know, is a bit of a whiz in the kitchen. And Andrew is going to come and demonstrate some healthy cooking. And I've been informed that there will be samples and recipes available. So that would be good. And then finally, Hetty is coming along and she's going to be sharing just what God puts on her heart for how we take care of our souls. So we've got Emma, Andrew and Hetty. We have had a wonderful start, ladies, to our meetings. We've had great numbers. We've had a super mix of ages 
And I think most importantly, we've had a real sense of God's presence amongst us. And you know that you are all welcome. I think by coming along, I reckon you will be blessed in your own soul. But do remember that when you come along, your presence is actually a blessing to others. Your presence will be a blessing to the three folks taking part. Your presence is a blessing to the planning team. Your presence is a blessing to the people that will be sitting around you. You might not believe that, but it's true. We know as a planning team that it's not easy for everybody to get out on a Wednesday night. But if you can, put the date in your diary and plan to join us. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. We're going to ask Kenny now if he'd like to come up and he's going to talk a wee bit about his work as a rural chaplain. Kenny, you're more than welcome. Great to have you. Folks, good morning. Uh, Gordon, I want to thank you so much for all your um, encouragement to me in this work over the past year or so. I was in New Mills once before. It was the old building. So that tells you how long ago it is, but great to be back uh, just this morning. So what on earth is a rural chaplain? To be honest, folks, I don't really know because uh, I've only been doing this for a year and it's brand new, but we're kind, of, we're kind of making it up as we go along and we believe God has plans and purposes for this. So uh, what I'm going to say, there's some little information cards. If you know a farmer or farming family who may be in need or potentially could hear, uh, could do with hearing something about Jesus, I've left some of these on the tables at the back. All I'm going to say is just a little bit of an elucidation of this. So my name's Kenny Hanna. I come from a farm in the Moorns. I uh, left the farm 20 odd years ago when I got married and returned to full-time study. And I, I gave my life to Jesus way back in 1990. And by his grace, I've been following him ever since. Now, this post is a three-year pilot scheme and it's funded by the United Appeal. So you know those Sundays whenever Gordon stands up and says, please give your money to United Appeal. One of the things that does is pay for this pilot scheme, so it's maybe useful for you to know that. Uh, I work in four presbyteries, so Armagh, Down, IV, and Newry, and uh, working across roughly, well, just for, for a bit of crack, how many PCI congregations do you reckon there is in those four presbyteries? Now, some of them are linked, but just shout it out, just for the crack. 100 is spot on. Wow. Nobody's ever got that right before. Um, well done. Uh, brilliant. So what am I here to do? Uh, well, I've been a PCI minister for about 20 years, 10 in Glenfuerie and then 10 in Second Dramara. Uh, my brief, I guess, is pretty extensive, but the strap line puts it like this, caring for farmers, their families and the rural community, bringing the hope of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. So what does that look like? Well, it means I work in partnership with local presbyteries, local congregations like yours, supporting ministers like Gordon and ruling elders like yours, and then local Christians and the good gospel work that's going on. And having been a minister for about 20 years, I know that local churches need encouragement. Uh, and I'm here to encourage you this morning in New Mills to keep going as you serve the Lord Jesus. Uh, I've been doing some events with local churches uh, so my, my home church is Mourn, and um, we had an event for farmers and farming families back in November, and folk of all backgrounds came along, brilliant mix of ladies and men and young people, lots of young farmers there that evening, and we were speaking about the challenges facing farmers and the difference that Jesus makes, and God brought along that evening, I'm told around about 190 people, brilliant opportunity with a couple of speakers, uh, Christian farmers speaking and a panel afterwards, and we're doing all those kinds of events with churches just to encourage them as they try to connect with the local communities and bring Jesus' good news there. I'm really asking one thing of churches as they go around. It's just one thing, and that is to pray. I know, I know Gordon made these available kind of ages ago. They're little prayer cards. I've left loads of them on the two tables. There's basically seven prayer points. Now, I couldn't do mass at school, okay? But I, even I can work out seven prayer points and one a day. What do you think? Is that a runner? Could you give me, like, seriously, could you give me, like, two minutes of your day? 
Because God is opening up lots of doors of opportunity, and I'm 100% convinced that's because folk like you are praying. So do you please, and if folk aren't here this morning, and they would pray, or they belong to another church, I'm not fussy who prays for me, okay, genuinely. That would be just brilliant if you would take those away and pray. We're building uh, teams to do the work. So uh, in that photograph on the left is Jim Henning. He's an elder in Tully Allen. Turl Arnold is an elder in uh, Warringstown, and they're involved with me in the March ministry. Uh, building teams as well to do work at agricultural shows. We had two stands, two PCI stands at agricultural shows this year. One was at Gosford Park in partnership with Margaret Hill Presbytery, and that's a photograph of that one. Then we had a stand at Castle Welland Show that was in partnership with Castle Welland Leitrim, and then two uh, congregations from the Down Presbytery uh, involved in that as well, Clock and Seaford. And we're hoping, God willing, to have two new stands this year, one in Lurgan Park at the show there, and uh, a further stand and as well, God willing, if God opens it up for us at St. Field. We're doing some bridge building events at Livestock March in connection with local churches. So we had 50 along for a well-being morning at Market Hill, that's the photograph there, and 48 registered for one at Hilltown Livestock Mart. We have really good relationships with the four main Livestock Marts involved in the pilot scheme, down Patrick, Rath Ryland, uh, Market Hill and uh, Hilltown, and God's opened up doors with people of all backgrounds uh, at those, and we're really excited about that. Speaking about all kinds of issues, and getting alongside farming families with a vast variety of need, from avian flu that you might have heard about on the TV, uh, cancer, farm accident, uh, mental health's a massive issue, uh, TB, succession. And then, since you did, did so well at the, with the other question, so inflation for many of us is around about 10%. Could anybody hazard a guess what inflation is for farmers? Key input costs, how much have they risen over the past year for farmers? Shout it out. 40, how much? 150 is a great shout. Um, 200 to 300% key farm input costs have risen over the past year. Folks, that's inflation. Uh, and it's okay if outputs are, are, are matching that, but when they don't, there's real worries there. Uh, building good relationships with farm support organisations. All of these folk on the screen were at least one of those events I mentioned earlier at the March. I've met with the chief executives of the Farmers' Union, Rural Support, uh, Health and Safety, NI. Um, rural Support are very good to me. Uh, they do lots of good work with farming families, and their mentors carry this little information card. Health and Safety Executive asked us recently if they, if they come across a serious or fatal farm accident anywhere in Northern Ireland and the family doesn't have uh, possible support, will we provide it? And of course we said we would. We're also doing some stuff with young farmers clubs as well. Building good relationships with agribusinesses. Some of you will know Harry Burke of Connor Screeb, not that terribly far away from here. Uh, Fian Valley have been very good to us. Fian Valley have sent out roughly two and a half thousand of these little rural chaplain information cards across our area uh, to their customers. Again, God opening doors as people pray. Uh, Farming Life, RS Farmers Journal and the Farm Week, those publications carry our rural chaplain diary each week to explain where we are and make ourselves accessible. You'll find us on Facebook and Instagram, which I know nothing about, but God's grace even extends to me there. Um, openings in schools, uh, God has opened up lots of opportunities there. That's Newton Hamilton High School, who've been very good to me. And those three girls recently won a very prestigious competition called the ABP Youth Challenge Competition uh, and did really, really well in that. Then taking opportunities to do good. Uh, if you follow Jesus, you should be the kindest person anybody knows. And think about that. And if you're not, there's something wrong. And I should be the kindest person anybody knows. And if I'm not, there's something badly wrong. And so we're trying to do uh, good to all people, as Galatians encourages us to do. We had a brilliant opportunity to do that at Christmas time at two of the marts at Rathfreyland, uh, Perry's Oil and ourselves. Uh, we auctioned a, a voucher for charity. And then at Market Hill, uh, Man United. Uh, I support Man United, by the way. Let's just get it out there. Um, so they donated a shirt for us, and that sold... Uh, at Margaret Hill, and charities included uh, the Newry Hospice that we were trying to support for those. Be seen as a pastoral go-to person at the march, somebody who's got integrity and honesty and who operates confidentially. 
having wisdom to, uh, and context to be able to signpost people in need to those who can help them best. We've been doing lots of signposting uh, of folk. Then getting the message out to the farming community, they're valuable because they're made in the image of God. Very often folks, farmers have a low self-esteem and I'm trying to say to them, look, God has made you in his image. There's no higher dignity than that. Then trying to share the gospel message with farmers one-to-one. -one. Uh, we've got a great opportunity. You can maybe pray about Hilltown uh, Bible study. That's the hotel on the left, the Downshire Arms in Hilltown. Uh, we have a, a monthly Bible study there in partnership with Hilltown and Clonduff Presbyterian Churches. People of all backgrounds come along. Uh, our next meeting is this Thursday coming. So pray for that and pray all sorts of people will come to know Jesus. The picture on the right is a little gospel tract we produced recently for farmers about the cost of living crisis. Again, there are some copies of that on the table at the back. If that would be helpful to people, do take those with you. And what we're trying to do in all of this is challenge folk who've got no church connection into local PCI churches and all for God's glory. So I'm nearly done. Uh, who am I here for? Anyone of any background? What area do I cover? The four presbyteries, which basically is all of County Armagh and most of County Down. You'll find us in the Livestock March, but we're really happy to visit people in their own homes. We've been doing quite a bit of that. If you were going to, if you type in Rural Chaplain Kenny Hanna to Facebook or Instagram, you could give us a like or a follow or a share. That would be just brilliant. And very last thing, Anything at all good that's happening in this is down to God and his amazing grace. And I just want to give him all the glory for that today. Still awake? Yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Well, my head's spinning after all that. <laughs> Uh, you're a busy man, Kenny, and uh, we have much to pray for, so we will do that. And it's just really great to hear of that wonderful work that goes on that we probably have never heard about before. And I know it is all new and you're piloting it, but the Lord bless you. It's a great work, it really is. We're going to continue now in our worship as we bring our morning thank offerings to the Lord. <laughs> Father, thank you for who you are and for all you've done for us and all that you mean to us. Thank you for your amazing grace and your everlasting love. Lord, as we have heard just about one aspect of your gospel work this morning, we thank you for it and for Kenny, who is spearheading this new ministry of our church. 
Lord, thank you for him and just bless all his endeavors and just exceed even his expectations of what you are able to do through him. Bless and encourage him in all that he does. Lord, help us all to support the work of your church, especially as we reach out with the good news of the gospel. So, Father, receive these offerings today as just one part of offering ourselves to your work and to the service of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Just before Kenny comes back to open up God's word to us, we're going to ask Katie and Naomi and Tom, I think Stephen, uh, to lead us in some, a couple of songs. songs this morning and the first one is a song you should all know well and um, thank you for the cross lord and then the second song that we're going to do is one that we've done in the evenings a couple of times called king of kings so hopefully if you haven't heard it already you'll catch on to it and we'll stand for both songs <laughs>
Well, what a fantastic introduction to God's Word. That would encourage you to listen, wouldn't it? That was fabulous. Thank you so much, folks, uh, for leading us onto the tech team as well. I want us to think together today about compassion. How have you felt when someone has said something kind to you? Or done something that's kind for you? We often remember when people are unkind, don't we? We remember those few instances when people are unkind and forget about all the kindness that we're showing. I mean, I'm like that. So maybe just as we begin, let me just say to you, if you're holding on today to something that's really unkind someone has said or done, and you leave it, will you? Leave it with the Lord. I mean, it just eats you up. And it's really, it's really unhelpful for you if you follow Jesus. So I say to you as I say to myself, Forget about the unkindness and focus on the kindness. I want us to think this morning about the good shepherd, Jesus, and how his compassion leads to action. So if you've got a Bible, please uh, open it up and follow along. Uh, Matthew 9, 35 to 38. Just a wee bit of background for you. Uh, the build-up to this passage is that Matthew 5 to 7 is like a book of Jesus' words. Jesus has been teaching And then Matthew 8 to Matthew 9, 34, Jesus has been doing stuff. And in this passage, therefore, Matthew 9, 35 to 38, Jesus' words and Jesus' actions come together. And they come together in a very powerful way in this message, that Jesus, the good shepherd, his compassion leads to action. It led him to action, of course, on the cross for us, for for our forgiveness. And it should lead us to action too, to love him back and then to love others because we love him. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like this, first of all, that the good shepherd brings us God's compassion. If you look with me at verse 36, you'll see that that Jesus' heart is the almighty motivator behind all that happens here. When he, that's Jesus, saw the crowds, it says, he had compassion for them. And what I think we need to get here is that Jesus doesn't simply show human pity. That would be powerful enough. But rather, Jesus shows God's almighty, God's all tender compassion. It's God's heart that's laid bare here in verse 36. I know a shepherd, uh, and when his ewes are lambing, he, he sleeps in one of these for weeks. Now, I've seen this caravan. And I've seen inside it, and I want to tell you, it's not clean like that one. It's not. And it's cold, and it's cramped. And he doesn't sleep in one of these at Cranfield in the summer. He does it in the depths of winter, in December and January. Why? Is he mad? Maybe slightly but he does it because he cares. He cares for the mummy sheep. He cares for the ewes. If they're in difficulty lambing, he'll be there. He cares for the wee lambs. If they've got trouble, he can chip feed them. He can help them. He can support them. He cares. He's a, he's a compassionate shepherd with a compassionate heart. And folks, I want to say that the compassion that Jesus, the good shepherd, offers us blows that out of the water because it's God's almighty, it's God's all tender compassion. I mean, I wouldn't even be a Christian without this. And none of us would be if we love Jesus. There'd be no hope for us. And therefore, I want to say that because Jesus, the good shepherd, offers us God's almighty, all tender compassion, there's hope for any of us. Sometimes we feel in life like there's no hope. I mean, sometimes things just crowd in on us, and if it's a number of things, it's really difficult, and we struggle, and we wonder, will I ever really get through this? Is there any hope? And when you know Jesus, the good shepherd, you have hope forever. And there's hope here for you, no matter how far you've strayed away from Jesus. No matter how long you've strayed away from Jesus, that doesn't matter. Jesus, the good shepherd, offers everyone without exception God's almighty, all tender compassion. So here's the question. 
Have you responded to Jesus, the good shepherd who offers God's compassion to you? I mean, growing up in a gospel church like New Mills or coming here, you know all about this stuff. This is not new. But you may know and have done nothing about it. I grew up in a gospel church. I knew about all of this stuff for years. Maybe you're a young person. You've come up through Sunday school. You've come up through Bible class and your mum and dad follow Jesus and you don't. And you've heard all this stuff. And you've never given your heart to Jesus. You've never said, Jesus, uh, you've come to be my shepherd. I want to follow you. Jesus, you've died for me. I want to live for you. And at this point, the devil is saying, you just switch off. Who wants to listen to him anyway? I don't care if you listen to me or not, but I pray you would listen to Jesus, the good shepherd. And it's him who calls you to him, to himself today. And he says, come. So the good shepherd brings us God's compassion. What does that look like? Well, it looks like this. Secondly, the good shepherd cares for us completely. He cares for every area of our lives. Notice with me, first of all, he cares for us physically. Verse 35. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, healing every disease and every affliction. It means that either Jesus healed everybody or every kind of sickness, but he cares for us physically. And he continues to care for us physically. Gordon mentioned earlier on about the pressures in the NHS. Thank God we have an NHS. Literally thank God for that. We have an NHS because we, we grew up in a country that was based on Christian principles. Many countries do not have the wonderful medical services we have. And we have them because God cares for us physically. Then God cares for us mental health-wise as well. If you look at verse 36, that when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless. Harassed and helpless. It's mental health illness. It means to be down or, or downcast or, or to feel actually just hopeless altogether, to feel dejected, really. And COVID has been really bad for mental health. And maybe you've struggled with it. Maybe you're still struggling. And can I plead with you this morning, if you're struggling mental health wise, please seek help. We're not good at this in Northern Ireland. I'm not good at this. If you're struggling, please get help. You've got a pastor who cares for you. You've got a church family that loves you. And all kinds of wonderful support services. Get help. Or if you know somebody and you feel they may be struggling in this way, sensitively and wisely get alongside them and say, look, I don't have all the answers, but I've noticed recently you're not quite yourself. Can I help? Can we get you some help? This is so important, folks. Please don't let this pass. And then Jesus cares for us spiritually too, verse 35. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. So Jesus was proclaiming he was a preacher. He was proclaiming the gospel, the good news that, that he would die in, in his followers' place to, to wipe our lives, to wipe our lives uh, snow white. And he would rise again to beat death for his followers so that death holds no fear for those who love Jesus. And it's the gospel of the kingdom. The king has come. I mean, at the beginning of this new year, isn't it good to know that God cares? And sometimes as we think things are spiraling out of control, they're not. Because God is king and he is in charge. And he has sent Jesus to care for his followers forever. And he was teaching in their synagogues, it says, systematically, as you do here in New Mills, systematically opening up God's word so that God's followers can go through it. I need to just pause for a moment and say this, and this is important. Matthew 9 is not teaching. It's not teaching if you come to Jesus, you'll never have any more physical or mental or spiritual problems. It is not that. This is not a health, wealth, and prosperity message. It is absolutely not that. But it absolutely is this. It absolutely is that Jesus cares for you completely. Whatever age you are, and whatever your job is, or if you're retired, Whatever your background is, he cares for you physically and mental health-wise and spiritually. There's nobody who loves you like Jesus loves you. Do you know that? There's nobody who loves you like Jesus does. 
nobody. And I mean nobody. And isn't that so wonderful? Maybe you've got a patch of ground in your garden uh, and it's too steep or too wet to do much with and you might make a rock out right of it. It's kind of a bit of a waste almost. Well, Jesus, the, the good shepherd, makes it really clear to his followers there are no patches of our lives that are wasted. Sometimes I look at bits of my life physically or mentally or spiritually and I say, Lord, that's a waste. And Jesus says, no, it's not. And he says, when I come back, he says, I'll reclaim you forever. Nothing's wasted with Jesus. Even the stuff we think is a waste, it's not with him. He reclaims all of us. So if you really follow Jesus, the good shepherd, but, but maybe today you're despairing of a particular part of your life or, or sin you, you can't just get rid of, please be encouraged that Jesus will remake you completely brand new, whatever that issue is, whatever that sin is, because he cares for you completely. Or maybe, maybe there's a family member or a friend because you follow Jesus and, and they seem a million miles away from Jesus. Whatever the reason is, please understand, Jesus can remake them completely too. So don't give up on them. Keep praying for them. Keep loving them. Keep inviting them along to New Mills on a Sunday. Keep looking for opportunities, not to badger them, but, but wisely and graciously as God gives you opportunities just to speak to them a little word about Jesus. And if you yourself think that you're a lost cause, I really want to encourage you today, nothing could be further from the case. You're not a lost cause, you're here today. Jesus cares for you completely and he can change your life completely if you'll ask him to. Will you ask him? Now, um, I may be wrong, but I don't think there exactly are crowds of people banging down our doors today asking, what must I do to be saved? In fact, it seems to me that people will seek help from almost any source apart from that of Jesus. And so the warning that comes next is really important, and here it is. Choose the right shepherd to guide you. If you look at verse 36, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Now, they had shepherds. God had given them Old Testament shepherds, prophets and priests and kings to either model the truth or teach the truth. But often those leaders were ungodly, poor examples. Thankfully, God sent faithful prophets like Jeremiah or Ezekiel to say, I'm going to remove these unfaithful shepherds and put a faithful shepherd in their place. And one day Jesus came. What did Jesus say? John 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. See, folks, Jesus is the good shepherd you have been waiting your whole life for. You know that better thing you're waiting for? That better experience? That, that better aspect of your life? You know that, that thing you've been hanging on for all these years? His name is Jesus. That's who you've been waiting your whole life for. When I was a boy, we used to put our sheep up to Akram Hill in the mornings as a five-minute walk up the road from our farm. And one day I was up there with Daddy and Uncle John gathering the sheep. I was a wee boy in primary school. And uh, we got most of the sheep down, but not all of them. And then Daddy said to me, Nelly, Uncle John and I will gather the rest. You stay here with the sheep. And I said, yes, Daddy. But what I really meant was no, Daddy. And once I got Daddy's back turned, I headed off by myself, unknown to him. And the problem was the bracken was over my little head. And before long, I got lost and disorientated, and I panicked. And somehow or other, I made my way off Akram Hill, and one of our neighbors left me down to our farm. You see, I got into all kinds of trouble that day because I didn't listen to the shepherd. That was my trouble. And may I say to those of us who are following Jesus, the good shepherd, please listen to him as he speaks to you through his word, the Bible. It's been famously said, the problem we have with the Bible is not the bits we don't understand, it's the bits we do. Isn't that right? Putting those into practice, listening taking God's word aboard our lives so that it changes us and makes us more like Jesus. I mean, as God speaks to you and to me through his word each day in our quiet times when we follow him and, and talks and in church or wherever and Bible study groups, please take on board Jesus' words. I got into all sorts of trouble that day because I didn't listen to the shepherd. I thought I knew better. 
please don't be like me. But if we will listen to the Good Shepherd, if we will, maybe for the very first time, begin to follow him today. And then as we listen to his word, the Bible, and put it into practice in our lives so that it does change us, finally, here's what happens. Fourthly and finally, the Good Shepherd's followers are to bring his, his compassion to others. So this is like a tapestry. And the tapestry comes together, woven together in this final point. The good shepherd's compassion leads to action. If you look with me at verses 37 and 8. Then he, that's Jesus, the good shepherd, said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are a few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And so the picture has changed from uh, sheep and a shepherd to a harvest field and workers. The picture is different, but the message is just the same. And here's the message. Followers of Jesus, the good shepherd, are to be sent out to show his compassion to people who are like lost sheep. They're harassed and they're helpless because they don't have Jesus. And that, that's your job and that's my job if we follow Jesus. We're to show his compassion to just everybody we meet. And that includes the really awkward people, by the way. Do you know if you know any awkward people? I'm not asking you for names. You see that person who does your head in, genuinely. Even them, says Jesus, to me and to you. Even them. And don't miss the absolute necessity, not just of prayer generally, but notice the particular prayer here. Pray earnestly for God the Father, Lord of the harvest, to send out more gospel workers into his harvest field. So when we follow Jesus, we can be part of, the, of our own answer to our own prayers in this, that, that as we pray for God to send out workers into his harvest field, we've got to realize, well, that's me. I'm in this harvest field. I'm in this harvest field at school this week. At college this week, at uni this week, I'm in this harvest field for Jesus. I've got to show the people there Jesus' compassion. I've got to show the people at my work this week Jesus' compassion, even that really awkward boss or that awkward colleague. I've got to show Jesus' compassion this week to my family. I've got to show Jesus' compassion this week to the people I socialize with who aren't one bit interested in Jesus. The Good Shepherd's followers are to bring us compassion to others, to all others. Great to see young people here this morning. When I was young, when I was 16, I started a flock of these at uh, Pedigree Texel Sheep. I bought my first ones in Automart. Uh, used to be in Portadown. Tom Clark ran it for years. And uh, I had them for a few years. And there was this older farmer, much better stockman than me, much wiser than me. And he had great compassion and patience with me. He helped me select the right stock. I know how to feed them, how to show them, and all the rest of it. I'll never forget his, his patience and kindness and compassion towards me. And I know someone who shows his followers even more compassion, even more kindness, even more patience than that. And his name is Jesus. And he's the good shepherd. And Jesus shows us and tells us we're to, to bring his compassion to others, to all others. Let me just ask you as I close this morning, what will it look like for you this week and next week and every week to show Jesus' compassion to others? What will that look like? I mean, what's it going to look like for you to show compassion at school this week? What's that going to be like? At college, showing Jesus' compassion, what does that look like? Showing Jesus' compassion at uni, what does that look like? Showing Jesus' compassion at work, how do you do that? Even with the awkward people, with your family, what does it look like to show Jesus' compassion there with your friends? Ask Jesus, your good shepherd, to help you understand what it will look like for you in your particular situation to show his compassion to others. And then this is the really important bit. Ask him for his grace to go and do it. See, folks, if we don't go and do it, all this... This, this morning's a waste. It's just wasted. Unless by God's grace we go and do it and show his compassion, that's what changes lives and blesses people and even brings them to know Jesus, the good shepherd, for themselves. Because you see, the good shepherd's compassion really does lead to action. It led him to action. It led him to the cross for us. And it should lead us to action, to love him back for the first time, to say, Jesus, you're going to be my good shepherd, my savior, my king from now on. 
and when we follow him to show his compassion to other people too, even the really awkward ones. Let's pray for a second. Father, this is your word, and we just pray whatever you want to say to us through it today, that we would listen to Jesus, to your son, the good shepherd, and by your grace, by your enabling, by your power that we don't deserve and your love we don't deserve, we'd respond to it in whatever ways we need to. And that includes the preacher and me as well. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to stand up then and sing our final praise. Uh, it's all about how God has made this world, made us and, and cares for us in Jesus, Lord of creation. Father, may we mean what we have sung, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and always. Amen.